Welcome to the second tutorial of shaping of urban design. And this is a very quick recap of what we've done during this week. So if you have any problems or if I'm talking too fast, you can pause this video or make it slower. So the assignment of this week is creating a map in GIS. And to do so, we have to first get access to data. We're doing that through the Orin portal. You go to portal.orin.au, log in, and what you see is first the map of Australia, and on the right side you have four different bars. You have the area, data, visualize, and analyze section. This is how the workflow works. You start at the top by choosing an area, then you choose the data, then you visualize the data and you analyze it. So this is how you go. You first start at the area, second data, third visualization and analyzing, if you want so. Let's start with the very top thing. In the assignment, I ask you to gain data about Inner Melbourne. So what do we do first is we are selecting an area, okay? We go to area, click on it and press select. And if you are going to the handout and scroll down, you can see exactly this window. Oh my God, it is right there. So what do you do? Country Australia, states and territories, Victoria, greater capital city statistical area, greater Melbourne, and statistical area for Melbourne inner. Great, let's do that again here. That is sub-level. What did we have? States and territories, which one? Victoria. And in that area, we refine to greater statistical capital, blah, 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 whatever that was. And we want to have greater Melbourne. Amazing. We've done it. That's it. Boom. Here we have it. This is our bounding box, bounding area. So now we're looking for data set. In our handout, it is called MB mesh block. And we just go for that or we search for that. That means we are taking this as keywords, press it, and it will appear if we press search. Amazing. We have 2011, 2016, we choose 2016. Here we go. What do you see here is that each data set has many attributes. So mesh block area, da, 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 code names, and so on and so forth. What I ask you to do is click all of them because then you get the geometry as well. Add and open, okay, it's being added. That means Orin goes to whoever is providing this, ABS, Australian Bureau of Statistics. And it's trying to get this. Now it's going into the database of the ABS and trying to get that. That might take a while, that's okay. Um, there's two ways to then download it. One is, partial download is okay for now. Um, one is by pressing on the little wrench here and go and get the SHP file or in that text file, you go and download it here. If you are having problems downloading this, in our LMS here is on the left side a folder called data. In this, I try to upload every data file you, you need. For example, the mesh block of Australia. Luckily, it just downloaded. There it is. I click on it. On a Mac, it works automatically. You have to unzip it. So let's look at it, what's in there. In this, you find a folder called SHP. And in this, you have five different files. They are all important, equally important. One is the database file. This is where all of the data is stored, the individual records, the individual number of dwellings, and so on and so forth. The next one I want to highlight is the PRJ, the projection file. It means it knows how this data is collected, where is X and Y. The last one is the SHX, which is the shape file connection, I think. And then the first and foremost is the SHP, it's where the shape is. So every row of information has a, an attached geometry. 
So let's work in QGIS to get that actually into a map. Let's open QGIS. This is QGIS. On the top, you have your tools. On the left side, you have your browser and here down here are your layers. It's empty. So what do we have to do? We have to add a layer. How do we do that? We go into layer, add layer, and then add a vector layer. You could also add a raster layer, the text limited layer, and so on. In many cases, you download a CSV file, which has one column called longitude and the other one is called latitude, and in case of a point, for example, and that would be here. So let's go and add a vector layer. Voila, here it is. And I search now where I downloaded it. It's in my download folder. MB mesh block, shape file, and here we go. It's quite big, so 27 megabytes, and the database is 200 megabytes, so there must be some kind of content. Let's add this and see what happens. Et voila, here it is, the whole of Melbourne, and let's zoom in. Oh, there's something not really right, isn't it? When looking at the CBD, and I know the CBD is a uh, grid, but this looks more like a, I don't know, not a squash potato, but a squash parallelogram. There's something wrong, and that's called a projection. So every place in the world has a best projection, and in the case of Melbourne, we are using, and guess what? We can look it up on the handout. Best projection for Melbourne, GPA 94, MGA zone 55. If you really, really want to know what it is, what do you do? You Google it. Okay. So we go to this one, or oh, not to just that one, not just GDA 94. We want to have zone 55. Let's see if that is somewhere down here. Here it is. Voila. And what you see is this map of Australia, or actually the world, and a little square rectangle, and that rectangle shows which area it is made for. Et voila, we apply, and it is rectangular. Wow, amazing, great. That's the first thing. So we loaded this data, we put it into the right projection. We can now also rename this. We go into here, right click, and we rename it. Rename layer. And we call it MB Mesh Block Melbourne. Great. What do we do next? We want to know what's actually in this. We have the geometry. We can see the geometry on the right side. We know this is the layer, but we don't really see anything else. So we click on this little thing up here, either F6 or you click on this button, which looks like an Excel sheet with a header. And what happens is that it looks then at the database what kind of content you have. You see that you have 61,000 records and each one has content. For example, you have people. How many people are living in here? You have area or zero area. Sometimes you have to go into the metadata to understand what the individual ones mean. So for example, state code is, I don't know, spelled wrongly or we have a new one. And state num or probably means state name. So, or this one is SA2 main code. All of these things you can figure out in your metadata, which you also download in your file. So you have number of people, number of dwelling, and so on and so forth. Here we can do now really funny things. For example, we can make little calculations. We can go up here to that little abacus, that's how it's called, a little calculator, and you can create a new field. Let's create a new field, and how do we call that? We are interested in making a density map of Melbourne. That means we want to know how many people are living in each dwelling, or we can also figure out how many people are living in each area. So let's make the first one, and we make it people per area. People area. Ah, something I didn't say, because 
QTRS has a limitation on how many characters you can use. We have to make people without underscore area. And how do we want to do this? Because we're looking at the density, it's not going to be a whole number. It's not like five people, 10 people, three people. It's going to be a floating point calculation or a decimal real number. So we go into this and we want to have a precision which is a bit higher. Let's make it 10 individual numbers behind that point, behind the point or the comma. How do we actually calculate this people per area? We make people and you have two ways of finding. Either you, you type in people here or, and you have no people or you go into these little drop downs. You don't really see that these are drop downs, but you can click on the triangle and then the subcategories start. So we have here person. So it's person. And you can, if you want so, you can sample to 10. So you have zeros and threes and fours and seven and 10. So you can find that there are a couple of people collected. You always can see what kind of um, information you gain by take, pressing these two buttons and then you see what it is. And then we divide it by, and now we can see, maybe we use area, hmm, Albe, whatever that means. Or we can go and type in area and we can then see that there is multiple options. So for example, we have this one, which contains area, or we can use this one, which is a, um, has a dollar sign area. This is a function. A function means that the computer has to calculate something before it gets that number to then make the second calculation and divide people by area. Um, it's a question of choice which one you use. I think we used a pre-calculated one. And we what we see now as, uh, directly is that we see something like an output. We have an output which tells us that there are 4,342 people per square kilometer. It is because I know, for example, actually, that area Albert is in square kilometers. Does that make sense? Probably it does in some cases. When you have zero, it's probably also not making that much sense. But let's do that. We press OK and we are making the computer work. And it's loading, it's calculating, thinking, doing things. And don't worry, sometimes these things take a while. 61,000 calculations have to be done. Um, shouldn't be taking actually that long, but it's maybe not well programmed. And that's back again. So what we have now here is a new field or new attribute for each one of them, which are people area. If you had a problem by doing this, it might have been that you have selected one of the elements, one of the entries, because the computer then thinks that you only want to calculate for the one you selected. So if you have that problem, you can go up here and there is this yellow square, and it's called deselect all. And then it's not blue anymore, that means you haven't selected it. That means the computer is thinking again that you are having the whole of the data set in mind. I also want to highlight another part, and that's this little crayon, this little um, pen, which is highlighted here, or actually not highlighted, but selected, so it's darker. And that means you're in an editing session. That means you can edit the data. Normally it's safe. You can't edit things, you can't change things. But if that is on, then you can change things. At the end of it, you press that because then it asks you, do you want to save this? And then you say, yes, please. Voila, saving. And takes a moment. There we go. This took longer than expected. Anyway, so this is the data file you have. But now let's go back and look at this data file in a spatial manner. If you look now at the map, we zoom out and zoom in again, we don't really see where things are. So what you do here is you press right click, go on to properties, and then you can make a symbol out of it. 
A symbol means that you can change how it's getting represented. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so you might peek on the side, on the right side, what's actually happening. Let's start from the top. First, you have a drop down menu which has no symbol, which means nothing will happen. Let's see. Disappears. Great. No symbol is not really what we're looking for. Single symbol is that everything is looking exactly the same. Voila, everything looks the same. I saw a couple of you using these gradient colors. Yes, looks really sleek. Um, alternatively, you can make categorized graduated or graduated ones. That means that you are taking the underlying data as an information you would like to represent. Categorized means that you have a category, a discrete entity which is not um, comparable to the other ones. For example, land use. Let's do that first. What you have here is MB mesh block category or master plan. I am actually not really sure, but you have category here as an ABC file. Let's select that column. What you do is classify. That means the computer goes through the whole data set and calculates what the options are. And we don't like to have this one. We want to have some sort of random color. So we remove this, remove this, and we make this gradient fill. Um, no, that's not what I wanted. Apologies. Simple fill. And we don't like the stroke color. We take that away. And. Press OK. Et voila. We have all of the colors for commercial education, hospital, industry, others, parkland, primary education, primary production, residential, transport, and water. But it doesn't show over here. So we have to press apply. Beautiful. Let's briefly go into the map and look at it. What you can see is that we see these clear lines surrounding the rivers, we see residential zones, we see the CBD, and if you want to know what it actually means, sometimes you want to see it at the same time. You go into your layers panel and make the drop down available. You can also then switch some things off. For example, you don't want to see the commercial. I don't like commercial. I do like commercial, but you know. You can switch it on and off. That's how you do it. Let's go back to it because we want to actually show the parameter or attribute which we just created. The parameter attribute we just created is a number. It's something which you can say one is smaller than two is smaller than three. Hmm? Makes sense? So people area is, as you can see on the left side here, a 1.2 kind of attribute. So it's a decimal attribute. Let's do this. You classify, that means the computer goes through and calculate and looks up all possible items. We press apply. Beautiful. Nothing is there. Why is there nothing? Hmm. Very simple. Because all of the values are between 0 and 84,000. And that's because everything has the same interval, but most items are below 84,000. So we're changing the mode on how to represent this. If we go and say we want to have equal count in each bracket. Et voilà. Then you see that 20% are below 48.6. Another 20% are between 48.6 and 2,355 and so on and so forth. And what we see, we have it now. Here we go. If we zoom out, what you can see is that we can actually distinguish where the CBD is by these density measures. So you can see the CBD has a darker color, which means that there are more people. Then if you are going further out where it is less bright. This is how you manipulate the data for your representation. We go now into the last part and this is how do you make a map. You go into Project and then you say new print layout or control P and we call it Melbourne. What you see here is 
basically your piece of paper. And on the left side, you have all the elements you can add. On the right side, the characteristics of these elements, and I'm getting to that in a minute. And on top, you have when you want to export it as an image or as a vector data or SVG file or as a PDF because you have both raster and vectors. So let's add first elements here. So you can add pictures or you can add map. So let's add a map and we drag and drop this all the way across. It's now collecting the data and what you see is the map of Melbourne. The same thing. And now since we're doing a map, maps have scale, sometimes they even have like attributes and so on. So what we do is we click on this little map one up here and we go onto items properties. And what you see is that below there is something called a scale. Scale is what ratio one centimeter on the map has to one centimeter in reality. Let's make it 250,000. This is a trial and error, so please don't mind. What you see is that we zoomed in. If you like to zoom in even more, you can do that. You can also add additional other parameters. For example, we want to have a legend. A legend because we want to know what kind of attributes do we actually have in there. So zoom in so you can see MB mesh block is our layer name, and underneath we have the, the five graduated categories for our map. We might also want to add a um, uh, like a title and we call it Playroom Ipsum, we call it Melbourne Population Density Population Density by mesh block. Good. We might want to make this even a bit bigger. So you can zoom down here, you can change different fonts if you like. What I do encourage you to use is a scale that you know what one kilometer is. And you just add that here at the bottom and you see that is what 20 kilometers look like. That gives you sometimes a bit of an idea on what you're actually looking at. You can export it either as an image or as a PDF. I always encourage PDFs because it can collect both uh, vectors and raster files and you want to have that in case you're going to zoom in later. Save it. I saved it here. It's quite large. There you go. And the great thing about it is you can actually zoom in quite well. One second. And you can see that each one of these shapes is still existing. You can even look at them on the microscope, you will find all the corners there. All right, that's it for today. And we'll see you again next week in the tutorial and the lectures. Thanks very much.